I can't tell if anybody's out there. So if you are, if you can hear me, if you cannot hear me, please let me know. This is a little hard to do um, via Facebook Live. And I also have kind of a Zoom going so that I can share some documents with you guys. So um, please consider this to be interactive. I love to answer questions more than I like to just sit and talk. So if you have questions, um, try to post them. I'm pretty sure that I can see them. <laughs> There's a big delay between when I speak and when you see it. And then when you ask the questions and come back, um, there's a big delay so be patient with me um i'm trying to do trying to navigate through all this technological stuff i'm not very great at it but i'm doing the best that i can i can see that there's a few people watching now so that's good um i'll give it a couple more minutes to see if anybody else is going to log in to watch me um i'm trying to Dude's trying to navigate through all this techno. Now you're seeing me watching me, which is kind of tough. So I think that I'll be able to see your comments. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I'm doing the best that I can. This is all not my not my specialty, not my forte. So Oh, I can see like some little hearts and thumbs ups. Hi, Katie. Hi, Tina. Um, so that's good. That means somebody can see me. Somebody can hear me. That makes me happy. Okay, so it is just now hitting 630. So I'll kind of start slowly so that we can uh, see if anybody else is going to log in to watch this. And um, so I'm going to get I will get started because I do have a lot to talk about. I like to talk. Um, but I do want to make this interactive. So if you have any questions, please just throw them into the chat. Um, any comments that you want to add, please absolutely throw stuff into the chat because it makes it so much easier to do this when there is interaction. Um, my name is Melody Bailey, and I'm here today to talk to you about who gets grandma's yellow pie plate. I'm actually going to try to share, I'm going to try to share the presentation that I'm doing via Zoom so that you don't have to look at my face. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Uh, you'd think that I would know how to do this, but I'm learning. We're all learning all the time, aren't we? Share screen. Oh, I did learn how to do it. Look at that. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen right now. Who gets grandma's yellow pie plate? Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so my name is Melody Bagley, and I am the owner of Caring Transitions of Kanawha Valley. And we are a business that's um, located here in Charleston, but we work all through the, the Kanawha Valley. And a lot of um, the services that we offer involve relocation services, primarily aimed towards seniors because seniors are often ones that need help with relocation. They can't necessarily pack boxes or coordinate moves uh, the way that people can when they're younger. We also do home clean outs, liquidations. So sometimes that means donation. Sometimes that means dumpsters. Sometimes that means having estate sales or online auctions. But a lot of times we deal with clients um, after a loved one has passed away, we go into their home and they have a lot of belongings that are left in the home. And so I feel like I'm kind of in a a good, good place that I can talk to you about this, um, personal property inheritance issues. I do want to kind of give you a sneak preview that on Thursday of this week, Brent Van Dyson, who is an estate lawyer, will be doing a presentation here with West Virginia It Takes a Village on Putnam County Libraries um, Facebook, just like I'm doing right now. Brent Van Dyson will be doing a presentation that's um, estate planning. So his estate planning will talk a lot more about the financial side of things, accounts, life insurance, um, wills, that, that sort of stuff, the legal, sort of the legal side of things. The thing that I'm going to talk about today is much more personal side, and it's a little bit more, as we say, touchy-feely. This is not the legal stuff, but this is, you know, the stuff that gets to you emotionally. Um, it can be a little difficult emotionally, and it's not a topic that people think about. This is not something that people tend to put in their wills. Um, so I thought that we would kind of talk about it today. I definitely want to hear any feedback that you have on it, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. 
if I can figure out how to get started. So first question that I'll ask, what will happen to my belongings after I die? Um, and this is not necessarily something that's fun for people to talk about, but it does happen and it happens to everybody. Um, when you pass away, you have belongings and something is going to have to happen with those belongings. Um, just as a kind of a basic rundown, here in the state of West Virginia, if you pass away and you don't have a valid will, then in most cases, your spouse will receive your entire estate. That's not true in every single case, but in most cases, that is what will happen. And in if there's um, not a surviving spouse, then any property that doesn't go to a surviving spouse will pass down to other descendants. So that may be your children. Um, it could also pass to parents, your siblings, your grandparents, some other relative. The point that I'm trying to make here is that here in West Virginia, if you don't have a will, if you haven't made a decision about what's going to happen to your belongings after you pass away, the state will make that decision for you. A lot of times, even if you do have a valid will, a lot of wills are written really unclearly as to the specific belongings that you have in your home. So it really leaves the intentions that you have open to the interpretation of the person exec executing the will. Um, I recently have worked with a client that the will just said, divide my belongings among my inheritance. And it listed the inheritance, divide my belongings evenly. That's, that's not very clear. Um, it really didn't give any specificity as to, you know, does everyone get the same amount of belongings? Everyone get the same number of belongings? Um, everything that we own has some sort of monetary value. So do we divide everything equally according to its monetary value? It leaves a lot of questions open to the executor of the estate. To make. And so we kind of want to talk today about how to make those decisions before you pass away, because if you don't, then someone else is going to, whether that's the executor of your will, or if you don't have a will, then the state is going to make those decisions. So we want to talk about why we want to make a plan. Um, a lot of times we want to talk about this because we're going to make a will, because we're going to write a will. And it's nice to know, to think about the things that you own um, and, and kind of go through them logically so that you know what to include in that will. Um, there's also a very strong argument that if you make a plan now, it's going to be very, very helpful to maintaining your family harmony. So that could be now or later. Um, we all hear so many horror stories about families that after someone has passed away, the family fights and argues about their belongings. That's not what I want to see happen to you. Um, if you make a decision, then your family will understand your wishes. They will know your intentions. And there's a lot less arguing that can be done. Um, I'm not saying that everyone will always be happy with your decisions, but it will help people understand why you did what you did and the decisions made so they don't have to fight about it. Another thing to think about is just your own peace of mind. Um, if you worry what's going to happen to my stuff after I'm gone, or if you worry somebody's going to have to take care of this and you don't want to bear that, to put that burden on somebody, then that you can have a lot of peace of mind by just thinking about what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Um, you may have certain goals that you want to keep, that you want to meet uh, as just kind of a person, your personal values are going to line up with what you want to happen to your belongings. Some people have goals of, um, you know, preserving the past. Some people have goals of um, passing along money to a, to a grandchild or to family members or to an organization. Whatever your goals may be, it's really great to be able to line out your wishes so that you can meet those goals. Um, kind of one of the byproducts of making a plan is that it really gives you the opportunity to look at your belongings kind of in a fresh light with a new light and determine what, what things really are important to you and why they're important to you and to be able to pass that information along to other people. It's not something that we really make a point to do often in our life. So sitting and making this plan can give you that opportunity to kind of look through your belongings. And another reason to make a plan is to reduce the stress of a difficult conversation. So some of you may be sitting here and watching this and you're not necessarily thinking about your own belongings, but perhaps you have a family member who is going to be, uh, people are going to pass away. Perhaps you have a family member who's getting older and you want to start that conversation with them. Hopefully by the time we reach the end of this presentation, you'll have some understanding of ways to bring up that conversation, what to bring up in conversation and how to talk about this so that you can make this conversation easier. It's so much easier to have this conversation before a crisis happens. Um, if you wait until after a crisis has begun, then people are going to be um, emotional and people are going to be stressed out and it's, it's not gonna be pleasant. So it's nice to be able to have the conversation before there's a crisis. 
So the problem is when you start bringing up this conversation, whether you're talking about your own belongings or you're talking about someone else's belongings, there are going to be objections. No one loves to talk about this stuff. People really don't. Um, it can be a little bit difficult. And so I kind of want to bring up to you some of the most common objections that people have to these conversations and ways that you can overcome that to continue to have the conversation. Um, people will say it is disrespectful or it's uncomfortable. I don't want to have this conversation because I don't want to talk about anyone passing away. It's uncomfortable. It makes me feel weird. The truth is that death is inevitable and talking about this actually will do quite the opposite of making you uncomfortable and it can bring a sense of relief and a sense of control to someone. Um, especially if you know that you're, if you're facing a crisis, whether that's a health crisis or something else, this can bring a sense of control because you're able to start making these decisions. Some people say, I don't need to have this conversation. And I don't need to make a plan because it's not going to be a problem. My family is all going to get along. Everybody's going to know exactly what to do. Well, if that's the case, then why wait? You might as well go ahead and get that plan taken care of, get it all written down in writing, start expressing it and sharing your plan with people. If it's not going to be a problem, you might as well get that taken care of. Some people are exactly on the other side of the coin and they say, no, I cannot have this conversation because my family will never agree with this. Um, the truth is, this is your decision to make. These are your belongings. So your family doesn't have to like what you say, but this is your decision. Talking about it now gives everybody a better understanding. It gives people the opportunity to ask questions and come to an understanding. Um, this actually leads to a lot fewer misunderstandings and people are much more likely to be in agreement if you make these decisions ahead of time. Some people will say, I don't have anything of value. So why would I bother having this conversation? There's nothing, there's nothing that I own that anybody's gonna care about. The truth is that some people don't have a lot of things monetarily. Maybe you have a lot of things though that are sentimentally important or emotionally important, or maybe you just have some interesting belongings that somebody is going to, somebody's going to want to have. It doesn't have to necessarily be things that are expensive um, just to have this conversation. Everybody has something. Um, common objection is that nobody's going to listen anyway. And the truth is they're not going to listen to you if you don't bring it up. The only way that you can get somebody to listen to your plan and to understand what your wishes are is to start expressing that. Um, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be okay with it. And it really doesn't mean that they will listen. But certainly, if you never open your mouth and talk about it, no one's ever going to know. And one of the biggest objections, and I think all of us probably could make this objection to some extent, I'm already dealing with too much. Why in the world would I add to my plate having a conversation that this that's so difficult like this, that's talking about what am I going to do with my belongings after I die? This is too much. I cannot take it on. And the truth is, we all feel that way all the time. We do have a lot on our plate, but there will never be an ideal time. I promise you, nobody ever has stopped and said, you know what, I'm bored and I have a lot of time on my hands and I absolutely want to sit down and talk to somebody about my belongings and what we're going to do with them after I pass away. Or, you know what, I want to go and have this conversation with my family members to talk about their belongings. There's never a great time and people don't, this is not something you're going to want to do. But this is part of a larger scheme. Um, this is one step that really is important and people fail to mention it. People fail to plan for it. And it can cause a lot of stress and a lot of family heartache um, after the fact if you haven't dealt with it. So it's probably best to just go ahead and start making the decisions now. I do want to mention some tips on talking about these sensitive issues. Um, if you're going to bring this up with a family member to talk about, maybe you want to talk to your mother or your father, one of your parents, your siblings about what they are going to do with their belongings after they passed away, you probably want to bring it up in a very sensitive way. This is not something that you can just have a very flippant conversation. You, you want to be very um, sensitive and aware. So understand what you want to bring up before you start having this conversation and anticipate what your role is going to be in the conversation. Are they your belongings and you're the decision maker and you want to have this conversation to make others aware of your decisions? Or perhaps you're an outsider. These aren't your belongings, but you know that it's going to be um, something that you want to be involved in or you want to take the burden off of someone else. So anticipate what your role is going to be in the conversation and understand why you want to bring this up. Um, think about some of the concerns that we talked about on the previous slide and go ahead and rehearse 
um, maybe you have a certain way that you want to bring this up. If you have a certain um, kind of stream of words that you want to use, there is no shame in sitting in front of the mirror and practicing what you're going to say to that person. Also do want you to caution you to consider the timing. Um, immediately after there's been a death in the family, when people are still grieving, is probably not a great time to bring this up. Um, you want to consider what someone else is going through before you bring up a sensitive conversation like this. And one of the keys to communication, especially about sensitive topics, not just this, but lots of sensitive topics, is to use I statements. Um, don't try to put words in someone else's mouth, but consider speaking about yourself because you know your own thoughts and your own feelings. So share, I feel this way. I want to do this. Don't necessarily put, your, put yourself in someone else's shoes and tell them how they should feel or what they should do. I do want to talk a little bit um, real quick. So if you're watching this um, seminar and I have some handouts, so I'm going to kind of show them to you here on the screen. If you want copies of these emailed to you, then just um, in the comments, just let me know. If you leave a little note that says, I would like to have copies of the handouts, um, I will gladly send them to you. Um, you can also email me. My email address is mjbailey at caringtransitions.com and I can send those out to you. I won't be able to send them while I'm doing this. It's a little too much uh, multitasking for me, but I'll be happy to send them after the presentation's over. So you can kind of follow along and they really act as worksheets something that you can work through um, to kind of keep your thoughts and keep, keep your thoughts straight and work through this um, through these issues. So I want to tell you a little bit about this first step that we're going to take. The first step that we always talk about when we're talking about what we want to do with our belongings. Um, and, and let me back up a little bit and talk to you about grandma's yellow pie plate. So the reason that we call this session uh, grandma's yellow pie plate is because um, family members sometimes have special belongings that last in their family. So in this situation, we're talking about a grandmother and every time she came to Thanksgiving, she made a, a um, pumpkin pie and it was in this special yellow pie plate. After grandma passes away, people are gonna talk about that yellow pie plate um, because it was special to their family. And so the family is gonna talk about who gets this, where did it come from? What's it really worth? Where does it need to go? And so that's kind of what we're talking about is knowing your priorities. Um, so when you're talking about your personal belongings, the first thing that you want to do is to um, identify what your priorities are. Everyone's are different. None are right and none are wrong. What's important is to know what your own priority is. Some, people's, um, some people put a high priority on maintaining privacy. So they don't necessarily want um, private information to be spread abroad. They don't want the public to be aware. Um, some people have a high priority in maintaining family relationships. They want the family to continue to get along. They don't want arguing. Um, some people very strongly value fairness. Um, we'll go into a whole big spiel about fairness here in just a minute because fairness is not as simple as it sounds. Um, people have different priorities about preserving their memories. Um, people have um, ideas about society. You know, if you have historical items that you want to see go out and do good in the world, um, then certainly you need to identify that priority. Some people's priority is money, and I'm not saying that that is a bad thing. Um, truly, people's priority can be money because perhaps you need or someone in your family needs money more than they need belongings. That can be true for a whole lot of us. So before we go into this, you do want to um, identify your priorities. I'm going to try to pull up the document that talks about priorities just to kind of walk you through it. I have to figure out how to share it, of course. Back up. I have to figure out how to share this document. <laughs> Um, a new share. You guys are kind of learning along with me. Okay, so hopefully I'm showing you this document now that says potential transfer priorities. Um, so what this is, whether you are the owner of the belongings or whether it's someone else and you're just having a conversation with them, this is a worksheet that you can work through to fill out to kind of determine what your own priorities are and to determine what that person's priorities are. Um, so what you do as you go through here is we kind of look at every, I'm going to try to highlight them. I'm not sure if you can see it, but we look through the questions and every there's different sections for different priorities. Um, for each question, you can indicate along the scale whether this is a thing that is not at all important to you or whether this is something that's very important to you. Um, so in this case, our decisions about personal property should be kept in the family. Is it very important to you that that happen or is it not very important at all for that to happen? 
Um, then as we go through here, we talk about the importance of family relationships. So is it important for you that family members cooperate in making decisions or is that not important at all to you? Um, we talk about the importance of being fair, the importance of preserving memories and the importance of contributing to society. We also talk about other goals. So there's all, even a spot on here where you can kind of talk about other things that might be important to you, other ways that you want to, other values that you want to prioritize. Um, then as you finish the worksheet, what you'll do is go back through these and kind of pinpoint those questions that you answered, which are very important to you, which sections are very important to you and which sections are not at all important to you. So for some people, um, family harmony is not necessarily something that they're that concerned about. Perhaps they don't have a big family or the family is not very harmonized anyway. And so that's not a big priority for them, but maybe they really want to be able to contribute to society in some way, whether that's monetarily or through items that they've donated to historical societies, museums, something like that. The idea is to go through this priority list and kind of get an idea of what your priorities are. Um, that will help you as you work through. We're always going to refer back to these priorities in making decisions. Okay, so that's why it's very important to do this first. As I mentioned before, we talk about the priority of fairness and what does fairness mean to you? Um, not everyone has the same definition of what fairness is. And that may seem a little bit crazy to you to think that right away, but truly fairness is different for everybody. Um, fairness does not necessarily mean equal. Um, and a lot of the conversations that have been had across the country, um, you know, recently, and we talk about equality, but sometimes equality is not necessarily what we're looking for. Sometimes the process needs to be fair and not necessarily the outcome. So does everyone have a fair voice? Does everyone have a fair outcome? Um, as we were talking before, when we, when a will says that you want to divide items evenly with inheritance, um, does that mean that the monetary value is going to be even? Or does that mean that the number of items is going to be even? Does that mean that um, people's needs are going to be met. So they're going to receive items in accordance with their need. Are they going to receive items in accordance with their own contribution? So maybe their relationship with you. Um, so to bring this up, fair is not necessarily a one size fits all. I do want to share with you again, there's another um, document that goes along with this. I can find it here, then I think we'll be okay. Give me just one second, I'm learning. I think I'm learning okay. I'm learning a little slow, but I'm learning okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. So we do have this document here that talks about fairness. Again, it's the same sort of document that we had before, same kind of worksheet that goes through a series of questions and asking you, what does fairness mean to you? Um, this is perfect for you to fill out whether these are your belongings or whether it's someone else's belongings that you're trying to start this conversation with. Um, so you'll go through this worksheet and read through every question and kind of indicate whether that question, whether the topic that's in that question is not at all important to you or is very important to you. For example, the first one, are family members treated the same regardless of what they have contributed to the family over the years? So is it very important to you that that be, that that be held, upheld or is it not at all important to you? Um, we also have questions about the equal uh, dollar value of items. Um, does every family member have an equal opportunity of getting items, whether that's by drawing names, a lottery system, something like that. Um, maybe it's more important to you that the opportunity is the same, even if the outcome doesn't um, come out completely evenly. So this worksheet will help you determine what is fair to you. And then as you go through, you'll start to find out which of these sections um, is it really represents fairness to you. Um, is it more important to you so when you go to the end, you'll kind of summarize, is it more important to you that everyone is treated equally so that everyone gets the same? Or is it more important to you that differences among your family members and your inheritance is taken into account? Um, you can start to identify to you to yourself, what is fairness? What is equal? Um, if we are taking differences into account, what types of differences are we gonna take into account? So this worksheet will kind of help you work through that. Again, it's something that you'll wanna keep in mind as you are making your decisions about your belongings is what is fair. So those are the two kind of more nebulous and vague ideas that we're talking about. But then we also wanna talk a little bit about 
the actual pie plates. So we're talking about the actual belongings, the actual items that may be in your home, that may be um, in your loved one's home that we're talking about. So the first point that I wanna make is don't make any assumptions. Um, we kind of, a lot of people will jump in and say, this is, this is monetarily valuable, so it's important. But this over here, this is junk, so I'm just gonna do whatever with it and they don't think about it. Um, that is not always the case because what is not monetarily valuable may have strong sentimental value, strong genealogical value, historical value, emotional value to someone. Um, so what is really important is to have everyone that's gonna be involved make a list. This means not just the person whose belongings they are, but everyone who's close to that person that may be an inheritant. So everyone is gonna make an, a list of all of the belongings that they see that could be important to determine. Um, just as a kind of a cheat sheet here, we'll talk about some potential things on the furniture in your home, um, kitchen items. So we have dishes, we have cookware, electronics, things like your computer, your phones, um, antiques. So we have antiques and collectibles in our house, uh, musical instruments, uh, jewelry. There's always, um, there's, you know, sometimes there's fine jewelry. We have engagement rings, wedding rings, but then we have um, class rings, things like that. And we also have just costume jewelry, but these things can still be emotionally important, um, even if they're not necessarily of a high monetary value. And then just lots of other things in our home, like our tools, arts, collections, um, written materials. So books can, can definitely be something that one, you want to consider how they're going to be passed on. Even written materials like diaries and journals, calendars. Um, you want to know if those things are going to be important to someone. I also threw pets in here. Um, something to consider is a lot of people don't necessarily remember to put their pet in their will. Um, this is something to consider. You need to know what's going to happen to your pet after you pass away. But also, if you guys have any, any thoughts, um, if you've ever experienced something, um, the passing of a loved one, and there have been items that nobody really thought about, so go ahead and throw it into the, into the comments, and that's something that we can talk about. I will caution you that this step is probably the most time-consuming, um, personally time-consuming, so this is definitely homework. This is not something that you want to spend four hours doing. This is something that may take you a very long time to get from the beginning to the end. Um, I do have another another worksheet that we can work through. So I'm going to see if I can get that worksheet up. It talks about what these pie plates are, identifying the pie plates. Now with this worksheet, there are a couple different versions. So the first page is identifying the pie plates for the property owner. That's if these are your belongings, then this is the sheet that you wanna fill out. And so the first sheet is really just describing the item write down why that item is special, and then not that you're decide, making a decision, but who do you think should receive that item and why? This is just to get your brainstorming. It's not necessarily making that decision. It's not putting it in writing to say, this is what's going to happen, but it's just starting to get a brainstorm and an idea. The second page gives you the opportunity to take the belongings that you've listed on the first page and give a lot of information about them people don't always understand the meaning behind the items that you own. This is a great opportunity to point out to people what you have and why it's important to you. Um, I can walk into a stranger's home and there can be antique furniture in the home. I don't know whether that antique furniture was bought from a store or whether that antique furniture was passed down through the past six generations. Um, sadly, sometimes the family members don't know. Um, there's not somebody there that can really explain to us the history behind these items, where it came from, how old it is. Um, it's kind of sentimental um, value to that thing. So this is a really good opportunity to take the list that you've made up here and kind of explain some of the details. If you have someone that you think it should belong to after you pass away, this is a good time to write that down and explain why. So the next section of this worksheet is for potential recipients. So if you're talking to someone having a conversation about their belongings, um, but they are not your belongings, this is a good time to make this list of items that belong to that person. So you can describe that item. You can describe why that item is special. Um, maybe it's sentimentally special. Maybe it's monetary. Maybe it's completely a very rare, antique, valuable. Um, 
but then it also gives a column here where you can say if someone else were to receive this item, how would you feel? And this is again those I statements. This is um, just speaking about yourself. How would I feel? There's a lot of times when we could say, you know what, if somebody else got that, that would be fine with me. I don't have space for it. I don't have an interest in it. I don't want it. But I think that someone else would be, I would be okay if someone else had it. A lot of times this is a, a time where you can really be clear and say, I want to have mom's wedding dress. If someone else got that, I would be devastated. Um, people don't know unless you explain it to them. People don't know what you're thinking and they don't know what you're feeling. So this is a time to really write that down um, to kind of share your thoughts and feelings about it. And then again, we have a part B where it's talking about the item and who you believe the item should go to. Everyone's gonna work on their list separately but at some point it's good to come together and compare lists with other family members and with the owner of the belongings, if possible, um, so that everybody can compare. There may be much more agreement than you ever anticipated. Um, but you can also write here, if, if you know that someone else has a special sentimental attachment to an item and you think that it should go to them, write that down here and write why. Others may have forgotten they may not even realize or remember that there was a connection with that person. So it's good to have the opportunity to share. Again, this is hugely time consuming. Don't plan to do this in an afternoon. Plan to take the, a lot of time to do this, um, days, weeks. If it's too emotional for you, take a break, come back and work on it again later. But consider this, that this is gonna be something big. It's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of time. So I'm gonna go back here to my slideshow. And now we're gonna kind of get down to the nitty gritty. Um, this is kind of the hard part, the actual distribution of belongings. Um, sorry, I lost my place. So we're talking about the actual distribution of belongings. Um, one thing I want to be really clear about, there's no right way and there's no wrong way. I have seen this done lots of different ways. There's no right way and there's actually no perfect way to do this either. Um, I cannot promise you that any way you pick is going to lead to a bunch of satisfied and happy family members. It's not always going to happen that way. Um, the important thing to do is to start making the decision now before a crisis happens on how you want this to proceed. Okay. Um, if you guys have any um, personal experiences in, you know, um, distributing the belongings of someone who's passed away, please put them in the comments because I love to be able to talk about different ways that people have seen this happen. Um, I have seen a lot of different things. I have seen families that get along really, really well and they simply sit down and have a conversation and take care of everything. Uh, and there's no disagreements, there's no fussing and it's over. I have seen other families where someone's passed away and no one wants any of the belongings and everything is liquidated in the home and the money is divided and then it's over. Then I have also seen families that, um, I won't argue is not necessarily a good word, but families that don't agree on what belongings should go where, what should happen to the different belongings. Um, those are those are harder situations okay there's not going to be a perfect way uh, but like i mentioned before if you don't make these decisions now then someone will make the decisions after you've passed away it's so much easier to make the decision now and have things go the way you want them to and have everyone understand why and what you're doing than to have the state make the decision for you or put your executor of your estate in a position where they have to figure out what they think your intentions would have been and then defend that um, one of the very first things that you want to do with this distribution step is to decide who needs to be involved. Perhaps you want to make the decision completely and entirely on your own. You absolutely can do that. These are your belongings and you can make the decision about who gets what completely by yourself. There's nothing that says you can't. Um, a lot of times we may have a spouse, however, and we want to have that spouse involved in making that decision. Um, sometimes you may want to have extended family members part of the decision. You may want to have a conversation around the table and, and you know, have everyone's input. Um, but it's up to you to decide who gets to be involved in that conversation. There are some people who want to involve a completely neutral third party. I see nothing wrong with that. And there can be a lot of benefits to that. Someone who is not emotionally involved in your situation can help you see things clearly. They can help um, kind of keep things uh emotion because they aren't emotionally attached they can keep things a little bit smoother and keep things from becoming so emotional so that progress can be made so once you've decided who who gets to be involved in this then you get to decide on a method and i hate to say that this is the fun part but this is the part where things get very very different um, 
there is no perfect way. Um, one of the most recent families that I have worked with um, decided on a method that um, they did an appraisal of all the items in the home and added, summed up the appraisal of all the items that were in the home, of all the belongings. And they said that every family member could use essentially funny money, fake money to purchase items in the home, but everyone's was going to be equal. Then they would liquidate what was left of the home and divide that to even everyone's balance. So it was a little bit complicated. Um, sometimes people decide on a method where they say, okay, everyone gets to pick one thing and then we're gonna go back through and do it again. Everyone gets to pick two things. Everyone gets to pick three things um, until people have stopped, until you've either gone through all the items or people have decided there's nothing that I want anymore. Um, sometimes the method is truly, I'm not giving anything to anyone we will liquidate the entire estate and we will separate the money. And that's absolutely legitimate. And some people would rather do it that way. Um, there are ways that in some circumstances that can actually lead to greater family harmony and less disagreements than actually dealing with the belongings themselves. The main thing to remember here as you're going through this is to keep your goals in mind. So the very first worksheet that we did that was talking about your priorities. And then that second worksheet that talked about fairness keep those things in mind as you're making this decision. You don't wanna pick a, a way of distributing family items that doesn't get you to the goal that you have in mind. And a lot of times we think, well, I'll just do it the way that's easiest. That doesn't necessarily get you where you want to be. Um, sometimes you think, well, the only way that I can do it that will make all of my family members happy is to do it this way. This is not to make your family members happy. You have goals, you have belongings. You need to make a decision so that your goals are met in the way that your personal belongings are distributed after your death. So while making the list of what we call the pie plates is um, a lot of personal homework time, it's a lot of writing things down, a lot of getting this done, this is probably the step that's the hardest. Um, it takes a lot of physical energy. It takes a lot of emotional energy to think about the distribution of items and to make that happen. I'm not talking just about the delivery and pickup of items of physical belongings, but actually to sit down and decide now who gets what. That is going to be the most emotionally taxing part of this. Again, the, um, there is another worksheet that goes with this. I will go ahead and let you know that this is the last of the worksheets. So <laughs> if that makes things a little bit easier for you. So we want to talk about how we're going to make the decisions. And this worksheet talks about that. Again, there's two sets of worksheets. One is for you if you are the owner of the property, and another one is if you are an interested party. So to talk a little bit about this, again, we're going to go back to the first set of worksheets where we talk about, is this important to you? Not at all. Or is this very important to you? Um, think about when you want to make these family decisions. For some people, they would rather make the decision now about who gets what. Um, I want to be able to have a say in who gets what of my belongings. Some people are completely on the other side of the spectrum and say, I can't handle that kind of pressure. I don't want to make that decision on my own. So I would rather wait until after I've passed away or after I'm incapacitated in some way and have someone else make that decision for me. Either of those is a completely valid option. Um, consider the position that you're putting someone in to make that decision for you, but absolutely it's a valid option to say, I can't make this decision on my own. Um, do you actually want to distribute items before your death or do you want to wait until after you've passed away to distribute the items? Um, do I want to let someone, a personal representative or a third party make a decision? Um, do I want family members to have a say in what they get or do I want to make the decision or have someone else make that decision? Um, so there's a lot of things here that may or may not be important to you. Um, you can also, we assess a little bit the importance of who is involved in the decision. Um, so people to think about are not just your spouse and your children, but also think about your children's spouses. Um, would you like them to be included in the decision making and would they be included in a, in a similar capacity as your children? Uh, what about grandchildren? And then things get a little bit more complicated because you have to also think about other types of family members. Do we have stepchildren? Do we have half siblings? Um, do we have cousins and grandparents and, and extended family members? Do we have uh, close friends of the family? 
that we would like to have be part of this decision making process. Um, maybe you have a housekeeper, maybe you have a close friend, maybe you have an ex spouse. Um, is it important to you that all of these people be involved? Who is it important to you to have involved? And is it important to you that everyone be present in the same place when they make these decisions? There's a lot to think about here. And I know it's a little overwhelming for me to just talk about all these different things that have to, don't have to be considered, but can be considered when you're making these decisions. Um, but as you go through this worksheet, you'll start to pick up on what's important to you, how you want the process to go, and you can start to brainstorm different ideas. So if you're not the property owner, the second set of questions is for you. It's very similar, but this is really just something for you to share with that person, um, for you to work through this and, and express your feelings um, without putting words in their mouth, but just to give them an idea, um, just to be able to start that conversation and, and start the ball rolling. So you can share that with them. I'm going to go back to my presentation here. I think I'm finally getting the hang of this. So I wanna, read to you a couple examples and then there's nothing worse than someone reading to you off of the screen but i will read to you a couple of these examples so example one when emma visited invited i'm sorry when emma invited her four children to spend a day with her and requested that no grandchildren or spouses come her children wondered what was up at the time their 85 year old mother was planning to move from her home of 40 years to a nursing home so the children gathered and spent the day going through emma's property with her Emma took an item, she talked about where it came from, and then the family talked about their mem memories related to the item. Then they decided who should have each item. Nine months later, when Emma died, the children couldn't help but appreciate the special day they had shared together with their mother before she died. What a wonderful celebration of her life it had been. So in this example, Emma wanted to make the decisions about who was going to get what before she passed away. She wanted to have an opportunity to have those conversations with her daughters. Those are the people she chose to have involved was her children. Um, she decided not to have grandchildren or spouses. And this gave her the opportunity again to talk about the sentimental um, value of these items, to talk about the importance. And it gave everyone an opportunity to kind of sit around the table and share those. Then we have another example. When my grandfather died in late spring, he left a list of what items should go to whom in the family. Rather than disposing of these items immediately after the funeral, our family chose to reconvene at Thanksgiving for what we called the great giveaway. After a wonderful turkey dinner, grandpa's list was read and each person received the items designated for him or her. As they did so, each took the time to share their memories of the fun times and special moments they had shared with grandpa. It will, I will always remember it as a very special day. So in this situation, Grandpa decided that he didn't want to be present for the distribution of the items. Um, he made the decisions on his own. He made a list and he wanted the decision. He wanted the distribution of the items to occur after he was gone. Again, um, time is something that they were very aware of. They knew that immediately after the funeral was probably not the best time to have this, have this distribution happen. And so they waited until a, a different occasion. So I'll just bring these two examples up because I want to show to you, it's not going to look the same for everybody. Every person is going to be different. Every family is going to be different. Um, some families, these, these two scenarios might look like they're completely foreign to you because you think my family could never do it this way. And that's completely fine. Um, the idea is that we take the time before a tragedy happens, before there is a crisis, to start to make the decisions and figure out how we want to proceed with things. I um, have about 15-ish minutes left, so I will try to not speed up necessarily, but I may skip through some things that are a little less, um, maybe a little less pressing. So I want to just mention some other possibilities. If you guys have other instances that have happened that you're aware of that you want to share in the comments, that'd be great. It just gives us another opportunity to talk about the different ways that things happen. Um, I want to talk about a little bit of the pros and cons, too, about these other possibilities. Uh, labeling items is something that's very, very commonly done. Um, we all, probably all have that aunt or grandmother who has, um, you know, written on the back of an item who they want it to go to after they pass away. It can be great. Um, in some families, that works perfectly. I do want to caution you that just labeling items is not a legally valid way of identifying. So if you have a family that's going to be contentious, um, this is not necessarily going to be legally defensible in court. Another thing to just be concerned about is that if you write it on a piece of tape and stick it to the back of an item, it, that piece of tape might fall off. 
that that marker that you've written it in might become illegible. And so everything that you had intended to to give away to certain people that may be lost due to the hands of time. So just something to consider. Having said that, some families, this is absolutely the perfect solution. Um, private auction. So there are ways that you can have family members or other inheritance that come and essentially do a silent auction of the items in the home. This can sometimes use real money and the money that's collected at this auction can go back towards the estate. Um, sometimes this is just fake family money. Um, there are pros and cons to this. Um, obviously, there can be some hurt feelings. <clears throat> some people might feel that more assertive family members are given a greater opportunity because they are more likely to speak up. Um, there are some people that feel that this is really great, especially if you're using um, kind of fake money, funny money, because it gives everybody a level playing field. Um, it also allows people to um, place more value on things that are sentimentally valuable to them, not necessarily monetarily valuable. There's also the option of a public auction or a state sale. Um, if we have um, maybe your priority, maybe your value is that you would rather leave um, money, that you would rather leave, uh, you know, liquidate your belongings and take the proceeds and send it back to the estate or just dis distribute it among the inheritance. Um, that's absolutely, this is a great way to go about that. One thing to consider if privacy is one of your values, then this doesn't necessarily maintain privacy because with an estate sale, you will have uh, members of the public in a home. Um, there can also be some loss of proceeds because you have to have someone that administers either the estate sale or the public auction. Um, otherwise, if you try to administer um, in the state of West Virginia, you have to be an auctioneer to have a private auction. If the family does an estate sale on their own, that can also be very emotionally draining. Um, so it's just something I want to caution you about. So family distribution, straight up just, you know, picking and choosing who gets what items. This can be anything from drawing straws, shaking dice. Perhaps you go from the oldest to the youngest in birth order. Um, this gives everyone an opportunity to pick at certain items, but obviously there are going to be some hurt feelings because people aren't, if, if you didn't get to choose that item and someone else takes it, um, this can, this can be a little bit grievous and, and can cause some hurt feelings among family members. A lot of times this does require the family to be physically present. Um, right now, when we're in this time of Corona, it can be difficult for family members to get together. That's not to say that it can't be done virtually. If we can give a presentation like this virtually, so much can be done virtually. Um, but this does give family a good opportunity to recognize not just the monetary, but also the sentimental value of items. Um, then we have the option, uh, which you may choose to die intestate, meaning you do not have a will and you have not expressed wishes. Um, in this case, the state will make the decision for you. The state will pass your belongings on to the next of kin based on uh, what the state law reads. Uh, I won't go into the legal stuff. I'm not a lawyer and I won't even try to pretend to be, but the state will make decisions about your belongings if you have passed away without a will. It does not allow for you to make um, special decisions, um, special bequests, what certain specific items will go somewhere. Um, in one, on one hand, this is a very great thing if you don't want to be the one to cause hurt feelings. If you have difficulty making the decisions, um, this can be a really good option. Having said that, this may also cause harder hurt feelings because someone didn't, because you didn't leave behind your wishes. Um, so there's a lot of pros and cons to consider for all of these. Um, talking a little bit, and I'll just kind of skim through this pretty quickly about setting ground rules. If you're having the family get together and discuss or actually distribute items, you do wanna decide where you're gonna meet. Um, think about, you know, is there gonna be enough space to accommodate everybody? Are children going to be present? Is there gonna be a good place to have discussion? Can everyone hear each other? Um, you know, when are you gonna meet? Right now, it's difficult for some people to travel. Uh, do you want to meet before there is a death, before there's a crisis? Maybe you want to meet right now or this holiday season. You want to go ahead and have these discussions. Um, that can be great, but sometimes people would rather not do that and they'd rather wait until afterwards. Um, so you want to consider people's grief. You want to consider not doing things too quickly after there's been a crisis. Um, just something to think about. And you also want to decide at this point, who is going to be part of this decision-making process? Do you want to be part of the process of making the decisions? What happens to your belongings? or do you not want to be involved in that process at all? Which, relat which relatives do you want to have involved? Is it based on tier preference? Is it based on individual preference? 
Um, maybe you have certain people that you do and don't want to be involved. When these are your own belongings, you can make those decisions. You absolutely can choose to include certain people and exclude others. Um, you, just some things to think about, your significant others, ex-spouses, caregivers and friends. Um, can you make accommodations for people who cannot attend, but you want to be part of the discussion? And in some cases, you may actually want to have a mediator, a personal representative, a lawyer, at some, something um, to represent you and your wishes, whether that is before you've passed away or even after you've passed away, you may want to have someone that represents specifically your interests. In most cases, that would be the executor of the estate. And again, we work through those worksheets to talk about priorities. What are your goals? Um, what does fairness mean to you? Use that worksheet. Don't go through the work of trying to figure that thing out and then not use it. Um, keep it at your fingertips so you, when you're having these discussions, you can identify whether the group has shared goals, whether you have your own personal goals. Um, hopefully, if the group is having a discussion, you can talk about shared priorities. If everyone has certain things that kind of float to the top of the list, those can be your, your shared priorities and touchstones that everyone can kind of go back to when there's disagreement. Um, you do want to talk a little bit about avoiding problems. Some families and some groups are going to get along just fine. Some groups are going to have stressful moments. Um, people are in grief. And so it's good beforehand to set some ground rules so that you don't have to try to figure them out as it's, as it's happening. Um, determine what your, what your method of conflict resolution is going to be. So are we going to make an effort to compromise when two people disagree? Are we going to have a third party that gets to be the deciding vote? Are we going to have a show of hands and, and the majority wins? Be sure to establish that when emotions are running high and people are starting to either um, feel very sad, feel very upset, feel very angry, establish beforehand that when that happens, you're going to take a break. Everyone needs to step away. Take a breather, take a 10 minute break, go get some food, some sunshine. Um, it may be worthwhile to have someone keep a record, whether this is one of the inheritance, someone in the family or a third party. It may be helpful to go ahead and write these things down so that there's no disagreement later. <clears throat> you also can talk about whether you want to be able to renegotiate this at some point. Just because you shouldn't have this discussion doesn't mean that you can't have it again and again. Um, I do want to say that if you're going to make these decisions, it's a great idea to go ahead and get them codified into a will. Um, that leaves no question, and that is a legally defensible um, document. I won't go into the specifics legally about a will, um, but when Brent Van Dyson is making his presentation Thursday, I'm certain, I feel certain that he will talk a little bit about the wills. Um, I'm going to skip through a little bit of this and just kind of jump to the end here. And now what? So we've had all these discussions. We've talked about what we can do, how to start, to start conversations about personal belongings, how to identify what our values are, identify what fairness is, how to identify the actual belongings that are important to us, and then how to start making the decision about who gets to be involved and how those items are going to be distributed. But now that we've had the conversations, what can we do next? So if you are the owner of the belongings and you want to make this, start making these decisions and make a plan for yourself, it's never too early. Um, whether you're young or old, it is never too early to go ahead and make a plan. I would say to you, ask me for these worksheets, let me send them to you and start working on these worksheets and ensure that your legal documents are in order. You can go to West Virginia Legal Aid and they can help you with a will. I will recommend Brent Van Dyson. He is another member of West Virginia. It takes a village, um, does great work, and he is a specializes in elder law. There's also West Virginia Senior Legal Aid. So any of those can be resources to you to help make sure that your legal documents are in order, whether that's a will or otherwise. And one thing you can do when you've started to make the plan is just start to communicate that plan. Um, don't make it uncomfortable or don't consider it to be uncomfortable because we've seen that it can cause so much um, heartache to not express your wishes. It's best to just go ahead and communicate this, communicate with your family, with your um, inheritance. And if it's appropriate and if it's part of your plan, go ahead and begin gifting items. Um, some people would rather distribute items while they're alive and then wait until after their death to see them distributed. Um, and go ahead and tell those stories behind the personal items. I think that's super, super important. Um, we don't often talk about the belongings that we have, why they're important to us and why they might be important to someone else. So go ahead and start telling those stories. 
maybe you want to have a conversation with somebody else. So it's not your belongings that you're worried about, but you want to talk to someone else about their belongings and what needs to happen and how to make the process um, go as smoothly as you can. It's okay to bring up the topic with someone and possibly you can use the worksheets as a good way to introduce that, introduce that idea and give them something to start working from. Um, if someone has a personal representative or a lawyer, or if they've passed away and there's an executor, it's okay to have a conversation with that person and work with that person. Um, this may not be your decision to make, but you can certainly provide information and input as far as you're welcomed. Um, if you have a property owner that's um, still able to make their own decisions, then help them start to figure out what their goals are. Help walk them through the worksheets um, and help them understand the different options that they have and start making the decisions. Um, encourage discussion. This does not have to be uncomfortable. This does not have to be complicated. Um, encourage discussion so that, you know, everybody's ideas can be heard. Talk to that person about their possessions and why they are meaningful. I guarantee you that so many people in your life have important things that they would love to tell you the story behind. They just need someone to sit and listen to it. They want to be able to tell you why these things are important. And be available to handle conflicts as they arise. Um, whenever these conversations start, sometimes families can get a little bit weird and, and you don't necessarily see it coming. You don't expect it. So be available to have um, those conversations and, and be there to help manage that conflict. Um, if you have another family member that has already started to make those decisions, then you can still help them make sure that their legal documents are in order. Um, and you can encourage them to communicate those decisions. Just having a decision is one thing, but being able to communicate it, especially with the executor of the estate, um, with other family members, um, go ahead and encourage them to start communicating their plan and communicating the stories that, about the items that they own, the items that belong to them. And it's never too early, never too late to start making that decision yourself. Um, work through these worksheets, start making a plan of your own. I promise you it makes it so much easier to take care of this um, before there's a crisis so that you can have these conversations. There's a lot of give and take and communication back and forth. Um, it can make things so much easier to do it now than to wait after there's a crisis. So with that said, I have about five minutes left here. Um, does, if anybody has any questions, then feel free and throw them into the chat box. Um, I will hang on here for a couple of seconds and, and be happy to answer any questions that you have. I'm just flipping through the comments here because I, I can see them. I'm not great at technology, but I can see what's going on here. So that's a good thing. Um, hello, hello, hello. Oh, people said nice things to me and I, I appreciate that. Um, mostly our goal with West Virginia, it takes a village is um, there are a lot of professionals in this group and we all have very different specialties, but we have information and we know that it really does take a village to help one another. And so any information that we have, we want to be able to share with you. Um, we wanna be able to just share with our community and support our community. It's very, very important to us that we're, we can do that. So I'm just here to provide you what little information I do have, answer any questions that I can answer and, and be of service in any way that I can. Um, it's really important to us just to be able to get that information out there. Um, seniors, especially these days, do not have the support system that they had a generation ago or two generations ago. And so um, as members of our community, we, we want to act. West Virginia takes a village. We want to act as that support system. We want to be able to support our, our senior community, everyone in our community. Um, those of us in It Takes a Village, we do specialize in work for seniors. And so we want to be able to share that information and, and get it out there as much as possible. It really means a lot to us and matters a lot to us. Um, so if there's anything that I can ever be of assistance with, if you have any questions at any point, um, feel free to just get in touch with me here on Facebook. So you can find me. My name is Melody Bailey. Um, you can also find Caring Transitions of Kanawha Valley. Uh, I'm the owner of that company and happy to answer any questions that you have. You can also contact the Putnam County Library and they will get you in touch with me, with Tabitha Justice, who is the one who founded this organization. Um, she, they can get you in touch with any of the speakers. We are happy to share whatever inf information that we have. Um, even if it's not for you, if it's for someone that, in your community, someone in your neighborhood, a loved one, um, we wanna be able to share that information. So. I do see a couple of people here have requested uh, the worksheets and I will absolutely send them to you. I think I know how to send them on Facebook. If I don't, then I will contact you and get your email address and I'll send them that way. But I'm pretty sure that I know how to send them. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, with that being said, I know it's a couple minutes early, but 
I have been talking for an hour, so I feel like you guys will be okay with it if we end a little bit early. I think so. Um, I really appreciate you guys getting on here, listening to me ramble on a little bit. Um, I do like to talk, but I mostly like to talk about things that are important to me. And it's important to me to talk to people about how to have these conversations and how to make things work a little better. Um, to take care of your family, to take care of your insanity, to, to take some of the um, hardship off yourself. So with that said, I really appreciate you guys. And... I am going to sign off. Again, if you need to ever get in touch with me, my name is Melody Bailey. You can find me here on Facebook or Caring Transitions of Kanawha Valley. Or if you want to email me, it's mjbailey at caringtransitions.com. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget to come back Thursday. Brent Van Dyson will be doing a presentation on estate planning. So he'll be talking more about the legal side and the financial side of things. Um, less so much on the soft side, but more about the legalities of estate planning. It's a fantastic presentation. I really, really recommend that you come um, and invite your friends and family. He, he really has a great presentation. There's so much to learn from Brent. So um, with that said, I appreciate you guys and I will see you soon. Thanks.